everybody, welcome back to Video Game Episode of Terra, a continuing series, Sega Race Renaissance, where we review every single arcade racing game Sega ever made in 3D in a retrospective fashion, and today we're taking a look at Wild Riders, a Sega Naomi 2 exclusive. I almost didn't include this video on the list, because technically you're not really racing against anybody whatsoever, you're just trying to get to the end of the course before time runs out, but it's kind of a bonus episode because I love Wild Riders that much. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, i got a Patreon link down below as well. But Wild Riders is an absolutely spectacular game, and from start to finish, it'll take you 5 minutes to beat if you can see the ending. It is very simple to get started and very difficult to get good at this game because it's basically timing perfection. In a lot of ways, this feels more like a rhythm game with controls than it does a racing game. Right off the stop, you get a little tutorial, you go left, you go right, you jump, and you slide. That's all there is to this game. Your speed is controlled automatically, you just need to avoid obstacles. But the great part about Wild Riders is just how intense the damn thing really is. Now, this is six minutes of action-packed gameplay. Want to jump over an entire pole? Pull the handlebars back for the jump and you will nail it. Get the timing wrong and your bike ends up right in that water. You'll see at the top there, there is a meter reading. And there is a cop after us trying to stop us. If that meter reading gets to zero, we lose the game. You'll see there, I just missed a jump and I ended up crashing into the wall and lose almost half of that meter. To see the ending of this game on normal difficulty, you basically have to play this game perfectly. But that's what's so much fun when it only takes five minutes to beat it learning the game itself. You'll see here we jump over this bridge, we got a C rank, C or below, and you're just going to dump your bike. I'm going to be showing you two different runs of this game so you can get a better sense of it because it moves so quickly. But this game looks spectacular. All of the cell shading are and the fact that it's running on Naomi 2, which was more graphically powerful than the Dreamcast or Naomi, this just looks like perfection to me. It's Sega through and through with some crazy taxi vibes in there for good measure. But you will see there's always something going on in the world of Wild Riders and you want to make sure you don't hit almost any of it. Hit that wall there and you start running out of that meter gauge. Once it starts showing red, you're getting close to being caught. But the better you pull stunts off and the less you crash, you're going to gain some of that back. Like going through this hotel here, there's some tight turns and you need to be really careful of them. But once you do it correctly, everything starts working really well. S rank there out of the building and I got another 100 meters increase on it. This is where this game shines. You basically have to learn it and become perfect. But because it only takes four minutes, you know, sometimes less to lose, you can just keep playing it over and over and over again, trying to get better. It is addictive. It's like I said, playing like a rhythm game. You keep playing the same song over and over again until you get better. It's got the same vibes here, except you're racing a motorcycle, not doing something like running on a DDR mat. But I can't say enough good about Wild Riders. The first time I played this game in arcades, I absolutely fell in love with it, and I play it quite regularly on either a Naomi 2 with a custom controller, or in this instance on Demule, which you can play at home. It is just so much fun. Now granted it's a one player game, but play with a friend and hand the controller back and forth to see who can go further. It is intensity to the max, and I absolutely love that about this game. It is just from start to finish, go go go. It never lets up, you never get a break. Like right here, we have to navigate through all of these 18-wheelers, shooting in between them, and hitting even one of them is going to lose you like 100 meters, and right when you're done with that, there's a police roadblock in front of you that you need to navigate around. The one good thing about this game, which is also one of its weak points, is that if you don't change difficulty, basically every single race is exactly the same, which means if you want to memorize it, you can get very good with practice. The downside of that is that once you master the game, there's nothing to come back to. But for 30 to 40 minutes as you play, it is absolutely one of the most fun Sega games you can get your hands on. And the soundtrack is absolutely spectacular. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and tell you more about the Naomi 2 hardware and the history of Wild Riders. But enjoy!
Just an absolutely spectacular soundtrack and it sounds like pure Sega, but you will see that I had a little trouble getting around that police station, and that's because I haven't played this game in probably over a year. But the fun part is the more you play, the more shortcuts you learn, because as opposed to trying to slide drift underneath all of that, you can go up on that banked wall there and kind of find a shortcut around the police. But now that we're getting close to the end of this game, any single mistake is going to cost you more than it did at the beginning. You'll see here, I am almost captured. There's a jump coming up, and if I could just get around these cars, I'd have no issue. But there is no way to get around those cars. You have to take the hit, and it's slightly a cheap way for Sega to make sure you might get caught if you're not doing too well. But as we look at this Sega Outrun style result screen here, we were so close to the finish, and I did that after not playing this game for like a year. But let's take it right back from the top. You can watch a little more while I tell you more about how this game is so special and that is because it's one of the few games that runs on the Sega Naomi 2 hardware which was the successor hardware to the Naomi which was basically a more powerful Dreamcast for arcades and the plan was if you believe the internet at least that Naomi 2 was supposed to basically be Dreamcast 2 at home probably slightly cut down but this game looks spectacular and it is running at a perfect frame rate. And this could rival and beat whatever the PlayStation 2 was doing any day of the week. And this would have been what you could have been playing at home if Sega hadn't canceled the Dreamcast two years into its lifespan and decided to get out of the home console market. And it's so unfortunate they did because I would have loved to see this on a successor console to the Dreamcast. But this time I hit an A rank on that bridge because timing is very important. You can push down on the handlebars and you can pull up for the jump and the slide, but you'll see there's a grade on the screen that was an A rank. That means I was close to perfect timing, but there is still some frames there where I could have pushed down on the handlebars to slide and saved more of my momentum to keep my meter limit up higher. And that's where this game becomes so fun, is understanding the timings. Just like a rhythm game, you can still succeed, but not succeed as well as if you had your timing a little bit better. And you'll see here, I totally screw up this jump completely. And that's the fun part about Wild Riders. Every single time you play, something slightly different is going to happen. But because you're doing it real time on the fly, you get to read the situation and correct from there. And that is why I love a game like this and added it as a bonus episode, even though, like I said, we're not technically racing against anything. We're trying to escape from the police. So while it is a driving game, I struggle to call it a racing game, but leave me a comment down below and tell me if you think they're the same genre, or if you think I'm correct to think this is a driving game, not a racing game. The same way that I don't think Crazy Taxi is a racing game, that's more like a driving game. It's a small distinction, but it is an important one, at least in my imagination. But if you think I'm wrong, just leave me that comment down below. But you'll see here on this second round, I was actually struggling a little bit more in this first area, but I'm going to do better in the second area. And that's just because by the time you get to the end of the course, you kind of almost forget what you did at the beginning. But I love this black car whizzing past us, and he's going to turn around and try to hit us here to screw us over, and you will see that he is successful at that. It's just such a pain, but anytime you make a mistake, it is your mistake. If you crash into something, you weren't controlling well enough. If you missed your slide or your jump, your timing was off. This game is very difficult, but it is extremely fair. And that's all you can ask for an arcade game, is that if the mistake is made, it's your fault and the game's not trying just to steal some quarters from you. And again, I just keep coming back to how amazing this game looks like in motion. The cell shading was a perfect option for this because it is very cartoony of a game, and that cartoon cell shaded style works. But you'll see here, on the second round, as opposed to sliding, I just decide to go around everything. It doesn't get you as much of a bonus as getting that S rank on the jump right there, but it does allow you a little bit easier of a method to get through. And you'll see here, I B ranked everything, and I did lose a little bit of meter. You're always going to lose something when you're doing these things. You just need to do a decent enough job. But here, with the police station the second time, I finally was able to get that jump. And sometimes the input windows are quite tight because you go through that fence, you can barely see where you're supposed to be jumping, and you need to be right on top of that so you don't make a mistake. But that's where the fun in Wild Riders is. It's just a great game. It's fluid, it's fast, and it makes you want to play it over and over again. You play and you're like, I'm just going to do it for 15, 20 minutes. All of a sudden you realize an hour and a half has gone by and you have not let your controller out of your hands. 
Like I said, this is a bonus episode. I wanted to do one, and I knew it was going to be Wild Riders because I loved the game that much. It was never ported to any home console, so the only way you're going to play this is either buying the original Naomi 2 and doing custom controls, or playing it in a Naomi emulator. And luckily, that does work. As we ride the bank right here, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave me a comment down below. We'll have more racing videos next Wednesday, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. But I basically get caught at almost the exact same spot, and trust me, once you get to this little village, things get genuinely hard. But if you've never played this game before, definitely do it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.